Hi, everybody. I'm Melissa McKay with JFrog. I'm a developer advocate there, and I am joined by Brett Smith with SAS. He's joining me today on the Speakeasy interview. We're going to talk a little bit about Swamp Up 2023 coming up September 13th in San Jose. Um, Brett, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let our audience know just what an awesome person you are <laughs> and what you do today. Now you're being funny. Um, so I'm Brett Smith. I am a uh, principal software developer at SAS, uh, but my main job at SAS has been architecting the current pipeline and building out the architecture for our next generation pipeline. Um, I've currently transitioned into a security lead for the, uh, it's a, not a permanent security lead, it is a temporary security lead. Uh, leading the charge to make sure that we uh, can meet the executive order attestation and secure up our next gen software pipeline to meet those uh, requirements. Awesome. Uh, do you want any of the like yeah, kind of touch, industry? Or touch the on the executive order. Oh, the executive order. This is all I talk about anymore. Um, so in uh, uh, we had in May of 2020, I believe. We got the uh, Cyber Executive Order 14028. It is an order for us to secure our supply chains, and it is directly related to any government contracts. Um, and then what they've done is the uh, NIST has come out with a, a, fra a secure framework called the SSDF, and it's got 42 points on it on things that you should be doing to secure your, uh, to secure your supply chain. And then recently, we've got an attestation form from the CISA that is going to be the minimal list of requirements we must attest to for government agencies. All right. And it's, it is a subset of the 42 items in the SSDF. The idea is, is that that's the minimum we're going to get at. And that has become our immediate priority because when that attestation form goes, it's in draft, when it becomes the real thing, uh, which could be any day now, um, we've got six months before we have to be able to attest to, uh, for government agencies. Um, wow. So it is uh, very imperative. Um, and uh, if you are an, in the industry and you work on government contracts, I hope you already knew about this. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, so. it's a long time coming, really, right? I mean, this is just going to be step one, I think, this legislation coming down. Um, but it's a huge lift for a lot of projects right now. Uh, would you say yeah. this is taking up all of your time? Uh, I am 100% focused on EO compliance right now. Yeah. So now the interesting part is, is that even though I'm 100% focused on it, 70% of the executive order still applies to what I was doing before, which is why they put me in this position. They're like, oh, well, you were doing 70% of this anyway. Come over here and take this other role for a while and help us guide our security journey um, for these type of things. So yeah, it, it, it's pretty much all I was doing before and it's all I'm doing now. Um, nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, huge plate in front of you for sure. Well, the plan is for you to be a speaker at our Swamp Up 2023. I was really excited to hear what you're talking about. And just the title of your talk is really interesting. Supply Chain Robots, Electric Sheep, and Salsa, S-L-S-A. Yep. What, what's electric sheep? <laughs> so um, electric sheep to me, uh, okay, so a little bit of background is that um, at SAS, we're an ISV. We still ship software to customers. I still take a bunch of software, put it in a box, shrink wrap it, and deliver it on the doorsteps. Got it. Um, it's, a, it's an older paradigm. Um, most things have gone software as a service. Um, I wish we were software. Well, we are software as a service as well. Um, but I don't, uh, my stuff feeds into the software as a service. So, um, but uh, we build RPMs, Debian's packages, uh, Docker images. I don't like calling them Docker. I usually call them OCI images because, you know, I'm not a fan of Docker. But uh, right. the, um, uh, so we deliver these, you know, uh, units and they, I call them electric sheep after, you know, the book that inspired Blade Runner. And it's been a running joke for, <sighs> five years since I've been doing talks 
And so if I don't make a Blade Runner reference, I get a nasty email from some of my friends at work. They're like, wait, what, what's going on here? Um, so it's crept into every presentation I've done in probably the past five years. Um, oh, that's great. So you've yeah. got a theme you're following yeah. then. Yeah. Your electric sheep okay. are different from my electric sheep, but they are what pay the bills. So. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, you have a ton of experience in this area. I'm really interested to hear what you have to say and what you're going to share at Swamp Up. I'm sure the audience will have a ton of stuff to take back with them, uh, maybe to help their organizations go through the same process that you're going through right now. Um, what would you say has been the most challenging aspect of this, of you know, making sure that you comply with your security um, requirements? Yeah, good question. Um, <laughs> the people. Um, <laughs> so, so I can I can code robots and I can plan out automation, but uh, people are the weak link in the security. And so training them up on uh, best practice, you know, a, doing a better job of explaining why we're doing this, uh, because this affects their day to day, right? Uh, as a developer, you know, what do I want to do? I want to pull my code. I want to hack and I want to push my code, right? And that's all I really want to mm -hmm. do. I don't want to leave my IDE. Um, and so part of this journey that we're on, and I'll talk about this in the talk, is that we're working on shifting everything as far left as we can, right? And then we're going to automate everything to the right. And I just gave away one of the key pieces of my whole thing. Thanks. Um, so they don't have to come now. They can just be like, oh. <laughs> shift left, automate right. I got it. Yeah, he's uh, crazy. <laughs> anyway, so, um, but the idea is, is that, so my goal of this is to make it where developers can't complain. I mean, don't have to like work too hard at things. They don't send me hate mail. Um, right. And it makes it where they can just get pull, do their work, get push, right? And then so as we shift everything left, we get into the pull requests instead of in, you know, instead of after the software has been built, sending them, you know, a Jira issue going, hey, we found these issues in your thing and they have to start over in that cycle. We're going to do it in the PR and you're going to be like, you can't merge your code until it's right. You can't merge your code until we get rid of the CVEs. And then I keep it out of the pipeline. The automation on the right goes down. The, you know, the awareness on the left goes up. Um, and so that's been the, those are some of the things that we're working towards in dealing with the big challenge of the, uh, the, the, the people part of it. Um, yeah. One of the, one of my favorite sayings in the recent talks I've been given is no more curl pipe bash shenanigans. Okay. It's got to come from a trusted source. It has to have signed provenance and we have to know where it's coming from, right? You can't right. just be pulling stuff off the internet anymore and popping it into my pipeline. Right. So None it's of kind this, of something uh, we've been working on. Begging for forgiveness. <laughs> right. And, you <laughs> know, and the, activities. Uh, uh, a plug on JFrog is Artifactory has been a, uh, is a huge key cog in this piece. Uh -huh. um, so we, you know, when we onboard third-party tooling, we're storing it in Artifactory. And then, so this gives us a known place where we can scan it and take care of it and, you know, know where it is and know the provenance of it so that we can pull it into the pipeline when we're getting ready to do our run. So just to say that, you know, we, uh, we leverage a lot of our factory. You know, I'm, I'm really hopeful for the future. Um, uh, you touched on a couple of things that are, I think the most important thing is why, why we're doing this. And making sure that developers especially understand why. Um, otherwise, you'll get a lot of complaints and pushback and not understanding why they have to do any extra work. <laughs> I mean, right. developers are asked to do a lot. This is for sure. But um, the tools are getting better and better. I know JFrog uh, you know, has been working hard to help this process as well so that we can do this push left in a way that makes sense. And um, one thing... I guess something I, I noticed right away, especially when I started working at JFrog, is learning more about what's going on under the covers and how it works for projects has been really valuable for me. In the past, on past teams, when I worked with Artifactory and stuff, I haven't really had much access to it other than here's your URL, this is how you pull with packages, right? And now right. I feel like it's becoming more important for developers to get a little bit more involved and how all of this stuff works, especially like what you said, you can't just pull packages from anywhere. You need to be responsible and understand all of those hiding spots where vulnerabilities can come into your project when you don't realize it. Yep, attack vectors. Yes, 
<laughs> yes. Well, um, do you work with developers directly? No, oh, I am a developer. So yeah, you are a developer. Well, I guess we all are in some way, shape, or form. I right? write code. Yeah. Look, you know, I, I, I lose it if I don't get to write code during the week. Um, I don't get to write as much as I like to. Yeah, no, I do work with all the development teams. Um, I, so we have our divisions are we have the product developers, but we also have a DevOps division, and we have almost as many developers in DevOps as we do in uh, product. And that's just kind of oh, how awesome. it goes. So there's about 1,500 of us. So uh, yeah, no, I work with developers. Awesome. Oh, no, this is good to hear because I know, I mean, some organizations are still pretty separate with uh, right. you know, operations work versus development work. And and uh, especially now today when we're trying to uh, connect all these dots, especially under security uh, context, it, it can be really difficult if you don't have the right organization set up. I right. Would, we try um, in in my previous in the team that I'm connected closely to. Uh, we try and build out the frameworks to help developers, uh, and then the developers can use the framework, and hopefully they don't have to customize it much and use it to deliver their software. And we all deliver our software the same way through the same pipeline. The pipeline's built with the pipeline, right? And then so then my supply chain becomes more secure because it's being built with a secure supply chain. And then the product's secure because it's built the thing. And we're all doing things the same way. So when I go over to look at a product, they're doing it the same way we're doing it. And there's no, how come you get to do it different? Um, so that's yeah. kind of some of the things that we're working towards. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, otherwise you're going to get, a, I mean, it just gets too big, right? Too big to manage and too big to handle when everyone's doing everything differently. Right. And you end up hurting a bunch of one-winged half-born unicorns into right. a cur and then a bunch of cats behind them. And it's pretty bad. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I don't want to hurt the cats and the one-winged unicorns anymore. Um, yeah. Unicorns aren't supposed to have wings. <laughs> Why does that unicorn have a wing? <laughs> right, right. Well, it's going to be great to see you in San Jose. I'm looking forward to crossing paths with you again. I know we have it at conferences in the past. Um, uh, this swamp up is near and dear to my heart just because we get so many folks in um, that are excited about all of the material that we have to share. And I know, you know, JFrog has a lot that's coming down the pipe and there's a lot of excitement going down around what we have to introduce to the public. So um, really encourage everyone to come and see yes. Brett Smith talk. <laughs> It'll be a great presentation, I'm sure. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Well, um, I guess that's that's what I wanted to get from you today. Just a little understanding of who you are, where you're coming from. Um, encourage others to come meet you as well and uh, get the benefit of, of knowing Brett. Um, we'll see you in San Jose. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>